Hello to all students. I hope you are doing fine. I am Professor Masood Fuzal. Today we are going to discuss the process of ossification in bone. Ossification is a special process during which bones are made hardened. There are two types of ossifications. The first type of ossification is known as intramembranous ossification. In this uh, type of ossification, bone is uh, mineralized and it is made hard within membrane and this membrane is known as mesenchyme. Mesenchymes are specialized type of stem cells which are used to make a bone within a membrane to form a, a compact bone or spongy bone, usually flat bones. This type of ossification takes place in the bones of a skull, facial bones and clavicle. The second type of ossification is known as endochondral ossification. Endo mean within, chondral mean cartilage. So this type of ossification is usually done to uh, make a cartilage into a bone and this is usually takes place during a uh, embryonic development and also this process also takes place at uh, a fracture site of a bone so let's discuss both of these process in detail so first of all we are going to discuss intramembranous uh, ossification Intramembranous uh, ossification usually starts with uh, stem cells. As you know that every body, the development of the body and the formation of different types of cells is done by stem cells. So to the formation of bone, there are specialized stem cells which are known as MSC. MSC are mesenchyme stem cells. So in the first step, mesenchyme stem cells differentiate into osteoblast and secrete matrix. As you know that there are different types of bone cells. For example, osteocytes are mature bone cells, osteoblasts which are going to form bones, bones and osteoclasts are specialized cells which dissolve a bone. So, first of all the stem cells directly with help of enzymes and hormones develop into osteoblasts which are going to form a bone. So MSCs differentiate into osteoblast and then they secrete a matrix. A matrix is a ground substance which contain specialized proteins and minerals which can develop into a bone. So right over here in the diagram you can see stem cells are going to develop a kind of structure which is known as ossification structure or ossification core in which there are many stem cells are embedded and few of the and some of the stem cells has been converted into osteoblasts they are also producing protein which is known as collagen which is going to form a matrix as you can see in this diagram the blue area of the diagram shows collagen which is a type 1 matrix. In the second step vascular in growth in ossification core. So this is an ossification core where bone, the process of bone formation is taking place with the help of osteoblast. Now we need a blood supply to provide minerals and calcium to the uh, ossification core. So as you can see in this diagram there are different blood vessels which are going to penetrate in this area and which will provide nutrition, calcium and minerals for the synthesis of bone. So osteoblast present in the center, these are blood capillaries, some stem cells are also located and type 1 collagen is present in this ossification core. In the next step, matrix mineralization takes place. Minerals is provided by uh, blood capillaries and bone cells are formed. Osteoblast 
converted into osteocytes which are going to form bone as you see can you see in this diagram there are blood vessels stem cells in the center you can see green color in green color these are osteoblasts which are developing into osteocytes in the center you can see the cells which are known as osteocytes which are mature bone cells and around the osteocyte there is a mineralized matrix which contain matrix and process of bone formation has been started as long as the bone is going to form the bone will increase in the length width and thickness of the bone also increases with the passage of the time two types of bones are formed central part of the bone is usually spongy due to the uh, uh, due to the osteoclasts osteoclasts dissolve some of the bone cells and form cavities which enlarge with the passage of time and the uh, at the margins of the bone the bone is kept compact which is known as periosteum or compact bone so formation of periosteum is the last step as you can see in this diagram the central part has become bone which is spongy bone osteoblasts are converting into osteocytes and on the on the margins of the bone on both margins of the bone there is a periosteum which is the outer protective layer of the bone which is usually compact bone so in this way a clavicle facial or skull bones are formed during this process which is known as intramembranous uh, ossification during this process many enzymes and hormones takes part in regulation of this process which we will discuss in upcoming videos the second process of ossification is known as endochondral ossification this type of ossification is takes place uh, during embryonic development as you know that embryo within the first eight weeks of the embryo which is two months uh, there is no bone at all in the fetus only a cartilage is present after eight weeks after two or uh, two months uh, there is a need to formation of a bone so the cartilage of the fetus uh, starts to convert uh, converting into uh, bones so that is basically hyaline cartilage which is going to become bone and that process is known as endochondral cartilage this process can also take place at the fracture site of a bone when a bone becomes fracture the ossification of endochondral ossification also takes place over there to heal the fracture site so there are different steps and i already had made a diagram for you in the first step uh, there is a chondrocytes enlarge and die as a matrix calci first of all we need a cartilage which is known as cartilage model uh, whether it is a small bone or is a short bone or is a long bone there should be a model which is known as cartilage model as you know this is a cartilage model and it is all composed of uh, chondrocytes as you know that chondrocytes are specialized cells which are present only in cartilage and remember that there is no blood supply in cartilage now this cartilage model is going to develop into a new bone so first of all the chondrocyte cells become enlarged their size increases and after increasing of size their cells and the cells of the hyaline cartilage starts to die due to the calcification as long as soon as their uh, calcification the process of calcification starts at cartilage points cells begin to die so in the next step the bone process of bone formation starts in the second step osteoblast which are bone forming cell covers the shaft of the cartilage so this cartilage now is going to convert it into bone so as you can see right over here in the green color these are specialized osteoblast cell which have been reached here to synthesize bone so they have started to synthesize bone right on the shaft of the cartilage now this cartilage has few regions first of all in the center there are chondrocyte cells which are present in the matrix and these are enlarged cells and many of the chondrocyte has been died formation of bones also has been taking place and blood supply also has been provided to the bone the terminal portion of this cartilage are known as epiphysis and the central shaft which is in the blue color that is known as diaphysis so osteoblast covers the shaft of the cartilage which is this area which is known as diaphysis 
in the next step blood vessels penetrate in the cartilage to supply calcium and minerals to the uh, newly formed bone so in the next diagram you can see this cartilage is slowly converting into bone this is the epiphysis region this is the central diaphysis region in the diaphysis region blood supply has been increased blood supply blood capillaries penetrate deep inside the uh, diaphysis where primary ossification center uh, has been uh, developed where process of ossification usually starts this is a, a marrow cavity in the center as you can see in the green color marrow cavity is formed by the specialized cells which are known as osteoclasts and chondroclasts both of these cells dissolve bone cells and cartilage cells and form cavities which enlarges with the passage of time and as a result a cavity is formed which is known as marrow cavity later on this cavity is filled with by bone marrow and uh, nutrition and minerals are supplied with the help of blood right over here and the process of bone formation takes place osteoblasts convert into osteocytes and they develop two types of bone which are known as spongy bone which is present in the center and compact bone which is present on the exterior of the bone so cartilage is replaced by shaft of bone slowly and progressively cartilage is decreasing chondroclast cell dissolve cartilage osteoblast take their place and develop into osteocytes by taking minerals and calcium from the blood supply and slowly and progressively cartilage develops into a bone of the cells as you can see in the next diagram uh, the bone has been increased in, in the size the length of the bone also has increased and at the same time the width and the thickness 360 angle the thickness of the bone has also been increased in the primary ossification center central part is bone marrow cavity and uh, within which supply this with which is supplies uh, with blood capillaries and bone formation uh, has been taken place chondrocytes and cartilage has been totally disappeared from this region only at the uh, junction of epiphysis and diaphysis there is a cells of cartilage are still present right over here and right over here in the next step blood vessels penetrate epiphysis and osteoblast form secondary centers of ossification now the formation of bone has been taken taken place in the diaphysis region which is shaft of the cartilage now there is another uh, center ossification centers are produced in the epiphysis region of the cartilage so for this purpose blood capillaries penetrate in this region of the cartilage where secondary ossification centers are formed where osteoblast cells are migrated which are mineralized and developed into osteocytes and cartilage is converted into bone structure so right over here you can see the secondary ossification center and right over here also you can see the uh, secondary ossification center on the margins of these bones there is a still cart layer of cartilage is present which is known as articular cartilage articular cartilage is usually present at the uh, ends of the bones and uh, these cartilage are usually form joints between two bones and uh, they reduce the friction between uh, the bones during the movement if this cartilage is reduced or degraded uh, uh, the condition known as arthritis is produced in youngs or in adults in the center uh, as between the uh, epiphysis region and diaphysis region there is a still layer of cartilage is present which is always present in the bone which is known as ep epiphyseal cartilage which is also persist inside the bone now this bone has been uh, completed and the cartilage hyaline cartilage which was a model now has been uh, converted into a bone which is known as uh, spongy bone and compact bone spongy bone is present in the center while compact bone is present on the margins of the bone so this bone is uh, mineralized and calcified with the passage of time and uh, these bones are increased in size and width uh, until the age of 21 to 25 years depending upon the conditions of the body 
and uh, that's all for today i hope uh, it makes sense and i'll see you in the next lecture until then bye